All right, guys, uh, let's get ready to do uh, Summer Notes 2. Um, so we're going to continue with imaginary numbers. We're going to wrap it up today or, you know, whenever you see this video. And, uh, yeah, we should be good, guys. Uh, by the way, imaginary numbers come out all the time on the SAT uh, subject exams and as well as the SAT uh, regular exam. Usually it's non-calculator, guys, uh, because obviously the calculator gives us an advantage. I do have a calculator. I'm going to use it just to check that we did it right. And probably not all of them. Maybe just one or two. <laughs> Excuse me. I don't know where that came from. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. And uh, let's see what's up, guys. All right. So it says, uh, Chavez, I was browsing some practice questions. And I saw that they wanted us to divide complex numbers. How do I divide complex numbers? So remember, complex numbers were invented. They were not discovered. So the way we uh, solve uh, division of complex numbers. So as you can see here, what we have is... Uh, negative 28 minus 11i divided by 10 minus 9i. So the way to do this is you got to multiply by the conjugate and the conjugate of the denominator. Always, always, always. So I'm going to go 10 plus 9i over 10 plus 9i. Now remember, in case uh, a lot of you, the reason why, uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say that you're not good at math, but a lot of the reasons why sometimes students uh, struggle at math is because they don't see this as as logic. Remember, 10 plus 9i over 10 plus 9i, this is just 1, guys. And anything times 1 is itself. So make sure that everything makes sense because that's how we're going to get better at math. Everything is just logical, guys. All right, so we're going to have to follow the, the numerator. Uh, so let's see if we can do that. Negative 28 times 10. That should be pretty easy. Uh, 28 times 10, that should be negative 280. So I'm going to write negative 280. Uh, that's an 8 there. And then I have negative 28 times 9. Oh, okay, well, let's see. 30 times 9 is 270, but 30 is 2 away from 28. So 2 times 9, 18. So 270 minus 18 is 252. So I'm going to write minus 252i. And then 11 times 10. Well, 10 times 10 is 100. So 11 times 10 must be uh, 110. So minus 110 with an i on it. And then 11 times 9, well, that's just going to be 99. So minus 99i squared. That's the numerator. And in the bottom, look, this acts like the difference of squares. If you wanted to, guys, yes, you can uh, distribute it if you wanted to. But remember that the difference of squares is just, well, this expression. This is called the difference of squares. There's a square there. There's a square there. A minus b, a plus b. So if I want to take a shortcut, 10 minus 9i, 10 plus 9i, that's equivalent to 10 times 10, which is 100. And then it says minus b squared, so minus 9i times 9i is 81i squared. So there it is, guys. And now let's see if we can simplify this a little more. So let's see, negative 280, and then 252, 352, 62i, so minus 362i. And then that i squared from the last uh, from the last notes. Remember that i squared was equal to neg uh, was equal to negative one. So negative times the negative is a positive. So plus ninety nine. And I'm gonna add these two real now. And I'm gonna do the same thing. All well, okay. I put an equal sign. So that means I gotta complete my statement here over. And then in the bottom it's one hundred again. I squared is negative one. So plus eighty one. So now here's what we have negative 280 plus 99 so that's like saying plus 100 so negative 180 and then uh, i guess subtract one right so 181 so negative 181 minus 362i divided by 181 so now notice we just have one number in the denominator so we say how many times does 181 go into 181 well that just happens one time so there's my real part and then how many times is 181 going to 362? I believe that's twice. 18, 18, 36, and then 1, 1. Yep. So I'm going to write minus 2i. So there it is, guys. So negative 1 minus 2i is your solution uh, to, this ex to this expression in A plus BI form. So I have my calculator, and let's find out if this is true. And, uh, well, I'm uh, pretty sure. I'm 100% sure that it's true. But just in case, because you never know. So parentheses, and I'm going to write negative 28, negative 28 minus 11i. Come on, buddy. Enter. 
and all this is divided by and then what's that 10 minus 9 I, 10 minus 9 I push enter and there it is guys 1 minus 2 I so we did it yay all right let's keep going um, now it says uh, express that as that's the same question uh, just with uh, better numbers uh, so let's uh, go ahead and do the same process that we just did a little while ago I'm going to multiply this by 5 minus 9i, the conjugate of the denominator. So again, when I distribute, let's see, 9 times 5, what's that, 45? So negative 45. And then 9 times negative 9i, so that's going to be a plus 81i. And then a negative i times 5, that's going to be a minus 5i. And then negative i times a negative 9i, that's going to be a plus 9i squared, in a little bit we'll simplify all that. In the bottom, 5 times 5 is 25. And then minus, uh, 9 times 9 is 81, so 81i squared. I'm going to put the equal sign, I'm going to combine like terms first. So let's see, negative 45 uh, plus, and then 81 minus 5, that's going to be 76i. And then the i squared turns to negative 1, so minus 9. And on the bottom, I have 25 plus 81. So let's go ahead and add these two dudes up. 45 and 9, they have the same sign, negative, so it's going to remain negative, and I'm just going to add them, the, the numbers, 45 and 9. Uh, so 45 plus 9 is, uh, let's say, 45, 55, uh, 54. So I'm going to write 54, negative in the front, and then plus 76i. So it looks like I'm going to have a fraction here. And then 81 plus 25, let's see, 81 91, 101, 106. Oh, and I forgot the I on this one, huh? All right, we're still good, guys. And uh, so let's see, 54 over 106. That's going to reduce in a little bit. Plus 76I over 106. Uh, so let's see. If I do, if I do by twos, let's see, so 20... Uh, 25, 26, 27, 27 over 53, plus, and then this, they're both even here, so again by twos, uh, let's see, 76, uh, so 80 is 48, so 80 is 40, and I go another 4 down, so what's that, uh, uh, 38, so 38, I over 53. All right, guys, I think that's my answer. So I'm going to say 27 over 53 plus 38 over 53 with an I on it. Uh, so let's see. Let's see if we got it right. I'm going to take out my little calculator and I'm going to go, let's see, parenthesis, negative 9 minus I. Come on, buddy. I. And then get out of there and then divide it by, open another parenthesis, and I'll put 5 plus 9i. I. Enter. So negative, oh yeah, there's a negative there. How did I miss that? Negative 27 over 53. And I'm sure you guys were probably screaming that I didn't put the negative there. Plus 38 over 53 with an i on it. So yeah, we're good, guys. Uh, I initially did not put that negative. Uh, but make sure you put that negative or else it's going to be wrong. And yes, I see it, guys. It's right here. Look, it should have been negative there. All right. Hopefully anyone, hopefully you guys are okay. I apologize if I uh, confused anyone there. All right. Here we go. It says plot the complex number negative 4 minus 8i on the axis on the right. All right. So here's how we're going to plot. You have to give these axes um, a name. So you can't just plot them just verbatim. I'm going to call the x-axis the real. And I'm going to call the y-axis the imaginary. So now that I've given it a name. So let's see. What's my real part? The negative 4. So I go to negative 4. And then what's my imaginary? The 8i. So the y-axis is imaginary. So negative 4, negative 8. And I put a point. And there it is. That point there is negative 4 minus 8i. And that's it. Um, I'll put it as a 3, huh? 
negative 4 minus 8i. There you go. Now it's correct. And that's it. So I'm sorry, guys, if you guys were screaming. Uh, I'm going to blame it on the time. So I'm going to say that because it's 4.30 a.m., I got some errors here and there because I haven't slept at all. Uh, but it's okay. That's not an excuse. All right. Let's keep going. It says, spot the complex number, negative 1 plus 7i on the axis to the right. So negative 1. First, I got to, you know, this goes forever to the right here like so. And I got to put that as real. And it already says I am in there. Uh, that stands for imaginary. So negative 1, move to the left. And then 7i. So go up 7. And there it is. That's the point. Negative 1 plus 7i. And you're done, guys. And it really is that simple, guys. Uh, so let's uh, keep going. All right, so let's see. It says here, I was reading a college algebra textbook on imaginary numbers because I'm a super nerd, and I found some exercise problems that wanted me to find the modulus of a complex number. Help. This is supposed to be you guys, remember. All right, nerd. Uh, this is, well, okay, I hope I didn't offend anyone by that, but um, this is simple, guys. Relax. So it says, uh, mo okay, so now all of a sudden, so there's two words that are new to you guys, or I guess one word. You see modulus, and then you see this symbol here. I've seen textbooks. You can also say absolute value. Uh, this is the absolute value sign, but it's called modulus. Now, sometimes they'll use two. Uh, sometimes they'll say like B equals three plus two I, and then they'll say, they'll put two like so. Man, look at that. Two, and then with the B, and then two like that. So sometimes they might say two, and then nine plus six I, and then two. So this is called the modulus. I've seen textbooks use two, and I've seen textbooks just use one little uh, segment on the left, one little segment on the right, uh, and it's equivalent to absolute value. So how do we find the modulus or the absolute value? Like this, guys. So the nine is the real part, so here's my real, and here's my imaginary axis, and nine plus six i, I should have put a grid in here, but I didn't. So I'm gonna say that point is nine plus six i. So if you recognize, or if you look at it closely, I have a right triangle here, guys. Make it always with respect to the origin. So what they want, they want the distance, they want that distance. So as you can see, this is just going to be Pythagorean theorem. That distance is nine, this distance is six. So we're just doing Pythagorean theorem, guys. If I call that C or whatever you want to call it, C equals the square root of nine squared plus six squared. So let's see what that is, 81 plus 36. So square root, let's see, 81, 91, 101, 111, plus another 6, 117. And there it is. You can leave it alone right there, guys. And that's it. I think 117 breaks down, right? Uh, let's see, 9 and 13. Uh, I think it does, but you can leave it alone. Um, and I'm pretty sure it does break down. Um, and if you on Delta Math, this is actually the exact answer. Uh, but you, you could always break it down. Uh, let's see, 13 times 9, I believe is, yeah, so you could say 13 times 9, and then the square root of 9 is 3, so you could say 3 square root of 13, and there it is. That's the same as the square root of 117. Both are correct answers. If you put this one, the square root of 117, that's still counted, right? Um, all right, let's keep going. Now that you know what modulus is, this just means modulus, find the modulus of negative 3 plus 2y. Sometimes they use the letter MOD, uh, not to be confused with uh, with mode. Um, so MOD means modulus. If you see MOD of negative 3 plus 2y, that's what it means. Find the modulus of this. So here we go. I'm going to do, uh, let's see, that's in quadrant negative 3 and 2, that's in quadrant 2. So negative 3 and then 2i, so there. And then I do my little right triangle from the origin. Always do it from the origin, guys. And the distance they want is this guy right there. So here's negative 3. This distance is 2. The negative is going to go away when you square it, right? Uh, so let's see. The modulus of this is 3 squared is 9, and then 2 squared is 4, and then 9 and 4 is the square root of 13. So there it is. So I'm going to put equals square root of 13, and you're done. The modulus will never be negative. It's always going to be a positive number, guys. Always. And that's it. All right, here we go with this one. Uh, SAT question, guys. Uh, no calculator. Uh, so these are how it's going to look in the calculator here. It says the expression 4 minus 2i over 1 plus i is rewritten in the form of a plus bi, where a and b are row numbers. What is the value of a? So re relax. Don't get confused, guys. It says where a and b is a row number. Remember that b attached to i is what makes it imaginary. 
But the letter B by itself, without the I, that's just some number. So that's why they're saying it's a real number. All right. So again, just like we did a little while ago, we're going to multiply this by the conjugate. So I'm going to multiply this by 1 minus I over 1 minus I. And let's see what we get here, guys. Remember, the 1 minus I over 1 minus I, that's just 1. So anything times 1 is itself. So we're not really, technically, we're not really changing anything, right? All right. So here we go. 4 times 1 is a 4. 4 times I is a minus 4I. And then 2I times 1 is a minus 2I. And then 2I times a negative I is a positive 2I squared. All over, and then the difference of squares here, so it becomes 1 minus I squared. So let's go ahead and simplify. So we have 4 minus 6I, and then minus 2, because I squared is 1. I squared is negative 1. And on the bottom, that I squared turns to a negative. Negative times a negative is a positive. So 1 plus 1. So let's see what we got. 4 minus 2 is 2, minus 6i over 2. Well, 2 goes into 2 once, and then 2 goes into 6 three times, so 1 minus 3i. And then, well, the answer is that the 1 at the a, which is this guy without the i, so there it is, it's 1. And there it is, guys. It's really that simple. Let's go to the next one, guys. If the expression 6 plus 2i is rewritten in the form a plus b i, where a and b are real numbers, what does the value of b? Again, the, the b paired with the i makes it imaginary, but b itself is just some number. That's all it's saying. All right, so let's find the b. So let's see, 6 plus 2i over 3 minus 4i. I'm going to multiply this by 3 plus 4i over 3 plus 4i. So let's see what we get. So when I do that, 6 times 3, 6, 12, 18, so that's 18. And then 6 times 4, 6, 12, 24, so that's uh, plus 24i. And then 2 times 3, that's a 6i. And then 2i times 4i, that is an 8i squared, plus 8i squared. Everything's positive there. In a little bit, we'll change that i squared to a negative. And then there's a difference of squares down here. So 3 times 3 is just 9. And then 4 times 4 is 16, so minus 16i squared. All right, let's see what we got. I have 18. And then 24 and 6 is 30. Well, when I add them, it's 30. 30i. And then I, we're turning that into a minus 8. Into a minus 8. And on the bottom, we have 9 plus 16. So let's see. 18 minus 8 is 10 plus 30i divided by 16 and 9 is 25. So they want the b part. They want this. So 30 over 25 reduces to, let's see, 5 goes into 36 times, and 5 goes into 25 five times. So there it is, guys. I hope uh, you enjoyed this video, and uh, let's go ahead and give that Delta Math assignment a shot. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, and if you loved uh, the, you know, if, if you enjoyed all this stuff, maybe think about subscribing. And uh, yeah, so that's cool. All right, guys. Talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Bye.